and welcome back to the channel everybody my name is apex pixel and today we've got a bit of a different video so if you follow me over on instagram you're definitely well aware of this already but if you're new here hey how's it going i bought a new car yeah so as you can see i purchased a new car it's not actually a new car it's used but it's new to me this is a 2012 bmw 135i it is a, an n55 variant of the car so i know that a lot of people go back and forth whether the n54 is kind of like the greatest bmw engine of all time this is an n55 which is essentially a slightly different version of that engine i don't think they can push to as high a power and something about twin turbo as opposed to a single turbo it's yeah it's this kind of, kind of confusing thing but to me honestly i won't be going for big power here um, it currently has a stage one plus tune on it which the previous owner did and i'm actually very happy with i'm sure there's a time in the future where i will bump that up to maybe a stage two or stage two plus tune but that requires a few extra parts on the car that aren't there currently so uh, i'm in no hurry to do that it has 73,000 miles or at least at the point of purchase Ooh, what is it Sorry, I'm a car guy, and when a 911 rips past, you have to look. Anyway, back to the car. So it is a Vermilion Red, and it pretty much has all of the packages included. So I happen to work for BMW. I have access to the original like MSRP sheets and everything on this car. And it comes equipped with not only the M Sport package and the premium package, which are very nice. And they give you a little bit extra kind of like leathery bits on the inside. Oh, hold on. Love it. Gotta go for the evening rip in the canyons. That's why I'm out here. Along with getting some like style stuff and a little bit nicer interior features, this also has ZCV, which is convenient package. So to find a car with all three of those packages equipped is actually kind of a hard thing to do. The only thing that the convenience package really gets you, which I think is incredibly valuable because I enjoy it so much, is the keyless access. So the ability to stick your hand in here and unlock and lock the doors as well as the ability to not have to plug the key into the car every time you want to turn it on. So the key just stays in my pocket, which honestly sounds like such a small thing. And it's definitely not something to waffle on whether to buy the car or not. But for me, the convenience level of it, like the name, convenience package, is so worth it. So uh, yeah, the only thing that this car actually doesn't have, and I'll show you guys right here, you guys will probably notice it in half a second. Let me open the door and see what you guys think. Exactly, you guessed it. Uh, this car does not actually have a manual transmission. So being a car guy and uh, kind of like wanting that extra little bit of connection between me and the car, I was of course looking for a manual transmission. However, they are actually very hard to come by and especially clean examples. So I did find a couple of manual transmission cars kind of near my area, which were in my consideration set. However, they had miles well into the hundred thousands. I mean, like the lowest one I was able to find was 110,000. That was at least reasonably priced. I guess the other kind of main issue with trying to find a manual transmission car that's low miles is the price tag tends to go way up. So for this being a 10 year old car, mileage is kind of like the biggest consideration factor when determining price of these cars. And like everything in the used car market, prices have just been kind of skyrocketing since. I ended up finding this car and not to say I stole it, but we got a good deal, I think, considering that this has only 73,000 miles on it. So two other things worth mentioning about this car are exterior related, and you could probably guess one of them is the paint color. I was looking for something maybe understated, maybe a black on it. I think silver looks really good on this kind of car, like late BMW models. I ended up stumbling across this car right here, which of course is Vermilion Red, which I ended up looking it up and they only did this color in this car from I believe like the late 2012 models through to 2013. So not to say that it's a rare color necessarily, but it's definitely uh, much more sparse if you end up seeing any on the road. I don't remember the name of the red color that they also used on this car, but this one has like a red metallic to it, which of course the sun is already setting, so I can't really show you, but uh, oh, and also don't mind because the car is quite dirty, but there's just a bit of a sheen or some sort of like metallic color that really pops in the sun. So 
I'm actually very happy with it. Didn't know it existed, didn't know to even search for it, but I think it's a great color. The other thing about this car that I think is fantastic that I'm glad the previous owner put on are the wheels of this car. So currently it's rocking a set of VMR V710 wheels finished off in, I think, matte black as they are matte black. They are 18 inch wheels, air eight and a half in the front, nine and a half in the rear. And it's also on some Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. I think I have that right. I'm still trying to learn all the different tire makes and models, but they're pretty good tires that you can put on this car. I'm a fan of them. I think the black on this car kind of works because of how much black there is, like black trim, uh, black kidney grill. Personally though, what I think I will end up doing is swapping them for either Hyper Silver or Super Silver V703s, if it's possible. This car is very hard to fit. The current in stock 703s will not fit this car. I mean, you could put them on if you wanted to, but apparently it's gonna be super aggressive. You're gonna have rubbing issues. You're gonna have fitment issues. So it's kind of best practice just to not put them on at all. Uh, they do make a spec that would fit. It's of course not in stock. So I'm on the short list of waiting to uh, hopefully get those in and on the car. But either way, yeah, some silver wheels on this car. I think that would really round it out, especially with the red paint. It's got that like candy, vibe. I would just really dig that. But for now, since they're on the car already, I'm not complaining. The interior of the car is pretty simple. Not too much going on there. It's got all the creature comforts, heated seats, uh, climate control, cruise control, leather interior. I mean, it's clean. It's nice. You can kind of connect your phone and listen to good music. But either way, I mean, the interior is pretty clean as well. Not a ton going on, but it doesn't need much going on anyway. Also, don't mind the uh, tape and microphone cable. I'm doing a little bit of filming, so yeah, just kind of disregard that for now. But yeah, guys, I mean, honestly, there's really not much else for me to say other than I am incredibly happy with this purchase. And it puts a smile on my face every time I'm driving it. And even when I'm walking into parking lots and I see it parked there and I remember that I'm the one that gets to get in it and go for a drive, it makes me really happy. So. Yeah, definitely really stoked on driving this car a bit more, modifying in the future. We'll go light on it because I'm not a big mod kind of guy, but uh, we'll see if we can't squeeze a little bit more power out of it and make it sound maybe a little bit better. I mean, it already sounds pretty good, but maybe up the decibels a little bit and change some of the aesthetics on the car that just kind of fit it a little bit more. I think a 1M conversion would be a bit much, but maybe just a front bumper and rear bumper. But that of course comes with paint and all that. So yeah, it's a bit of a headache. But either way, I just kind of wanted to make this video because I hadn't already to bring you guys up to speed on this purchase of mine. So yeah, I mean, this is like my first official car purchase. And yeah, as nice as it is to kind of document this process and where I end up taking the car in the future, um, I honestly think it's more for me than it is for you guys because ultimately it's gonna be nice to look back at these videos a few years into the future, even maybe at a point when this car no longer exists or is in my possession. Um, and it'll be nice to think back to the good memories and experiences that I've had with the car. So yeah, we're just gonna kind of document it and go from there. But before I end this video, and I don't wanna leave you guys with just like a boring monologue of me walking around my car. We got a nice Canyon road here. I've got a GoPro set up. I've got a face cam set up. We're gonna just try and get a little bit of audio tracks, get a little bit of video um, and show you guys what this car looks like on the road. So yeah, um, let's just start driving. Okay, um, I've got like 80 different things I'm trying to keep track of. And not only that, but I've got a screen here that's gonna really throw me off. I'm gonna be looking at that, but I've got the camera, no. God damn. Okay, you can kind of see it there. I got a GoPro there, which is gonna do a 360 cam. I've got audio, which hopefully sounds good. And I've got a face cam shooting me. We'll see. All right, let's fire this baby up and get moving. Not bad. All right, we got that recording. I hope, and I think I should be able to do this. Seatbelt first. That should be the first thing on my mind. Boy. Solid. Rolling. All right, let's go for a quick drive. Of course, I've been filming like all of the last half hour, so the car is almost cold again. All right, we can kind of get on it for a bit here. So that's like half throttle. You guys can't really tell. I mean, maybe on the camera, which I should be thinking about more because I don't want that camera falling off. It's still new to me. 
what haven't I told you about the car? It's got a sunroof, which I think is fantastic. I love sunroofs, especially because I live here in Southern California. So what I end up doing a lot is rolling the windows down, sunroof back, and it's almost like a convertible at that point, which is amazing for like any kind of time of the year because it's just always perfect here. Uh, it's got sports seats, sports searing. One thing I did do already, which is I guess technically the first mod for the car, is I changed out the interior. So the interior is normally like a red wood. I didn't like it, and I think a more aggressive look with carbon fiber looks better on the interior. So I wrapped it myself with some 3M carbon fiber tape. It cost me about 20 bucks. I s sort of filmed the process of how I did that. Uh, so you guys will see that in an upcoming video, but yeah, that's kind of the only thing I've done to the car right now. It drives very well at this point. Um, I would say since I've had the ability to drive M2 competitions, things like that, especially on a track, this car is definitely not as tight, but then again, you know, it's not even like an M stamped car. In fact, despite that pitfall of it not being a true M car, it drives incredibly well. And I'm just taking a moment hold the hunt to reflect on how beautiful the scenery is. I mean, seriously, Southern California live in pretty goddamn good. So for driving as well as it does, I mean, it handles so well considering it not having any M treatment thrown at it other than M Sport package. But either way, I mean, that's kind of just a quick little rip. I'm gonna go down here a bit so we can get some exhaust noises because I realized I didn't rev the car out at all. So there's a quick downshift. Baby, baby, baby pole. Not really anything there. <laughs> it really does make good sound, this car. Uh, and I probably shouldn't be doing this on this narrow road here. I'm just kind of like on a little access road to um, some trails. And it's gravelly on either side, so we're probably just going to tame things back a bit. We got a couple of rips out the back, which is good. No, I mean, this car, just it, it's such a bargain for what you can buy these for these days. Honestly, I mean, it's not like dirt cheap, but it gets pretty close. So I would definitely recommend if anyone is interested in buying kind of like a used BMW, look for a 135. They really are fantastic cars. And the sounds this car makes go beyond just like revving noise. And this is pretty much a stock exhaust. It makes turbo noises, like good turbo noises. turbo I mean compared to like big turbos that people slap on cars these days it's still I mean it's bringing in like that intake noise which is super nice as it's building boost and then on top of that you get like a like as, as it, all the pressure has to release I just it makes such good noises I love this car I absolutely love this car um, yeah anyway I think that's gonna do it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of this car content. I'm going to be trying to post it as regularly as possible. I'll be posting photos of this car on its Instagram down in the description below. It's also on screen. It's going to be Apex PXL because I can't put Pixel and I already ordered custom plates. Apex Pixel is a bit too long, so we had to condense it a little bit. That's the Instagram for this car. I'll be posting regular pics just for the sake of it. If you guys are interested in monitoring the progress of the car that way, you're more than welcome to. If you want to see actual like photos that I try and publish, uh, you can definitely follow me on Apex Pixel. That's also here and in the description below as well. And without further ado, we'll leave it there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.